Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in West Pro. Uh, if you, the COVID-19 edition, if you haven't seen the show, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell, actually right here in uh, Westboro. Uh, but this isn't about elder law. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've ever seen one of my presentations or seen these shows, you know my friends, Frank and Mary, uh, uh, their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means they're in Westboro, that means they want to stay right here. We're doing these shows as the COVID-19 edition in which Frank and Mary have been way too long in their house and just want to get out of the house. But if they can't do that, they want to know what's going on out there um, while at the same time being safe. And that's really the purpose of these shows. And Shelby Marshall, my wonderful co-host, your selectman here in Westboro, uh, has been finding great guests, people that who you need to know and to talk about programs you need to know about and to see how things are going along here as you all deal with this. So Shelby, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur, good morning. Great to see you. Um, I am so excited that we have Phil Kittredge here from the Westboro Food Pantry. So Phil, welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to see you guys too. I've heard so much about you too. <laughs> oh, we're world famous at this point. And, and he's gonna be a busy guy, the food pantry guy, you know, during the, that's gonna be intense. Intense. Yeah, so Phil and I have had the pleasure of working together on Westboro's task force, which was uh, established uh, several weeks ago. I've lost track of the calendar at this point. Uh, so this is about our 70th Zoom call, I think, that we've been on. Um, uh, but uh, Phil has been uh, in Westboro for many, many years. And I asked him to come on because, to your point, Arthur, uh, food insecurity is one of the um, top needs that we're hearing from our residents as they're calling in on our resource line and as our human services departments um, and teams and organizations such as the food pantry are hearing from uh, residents. So um, I asked Phil to come on just to give us sort of a where are we at today, but more important to look at as now the state starts to open in phase one through four, um, uh, what is the food pantry starting to look like as, as we go forward? So Phil, um, uh, you know, sort of give you a heads up of how this would, would run, but tell us about kind of what you're doing right now um, to kind of meet the needs of, of uh, folks that are food insecure. Well, we're, do we're doing a couple of things. Um, we, uh, when this all started, we brought down some copy paper boxes full of food down to the senior center so that they had them immediately available if any senior came in that was um, had issues with food, um, which we have not had very many because most of the seniors are still getting the Social Security checks. Um, everything, for, for a lot of them, not much has changed other than they're stuck in the house. Um, the closure of the building, uh, we had one of our one of our volunteers uh, soon press, was um, diagnosed with COVID-19, so the pantry had to be deep cleaned and sanitized. That took three and a half days to get that done. And we, naturally, a lot of our volunteers are seniors. They, a lot of them have underlying medical issues. They were very apprehensive about coming in, so it was really a no-brainer that we really had to close at that point. It was a combination of things. Um, so in the meantime, what we did is we put the word out looking for um, donations of gift cards or a regular donation we could purchase gift cards. And we anticipate, so far we've given out um, over $40,000 worth of gift cards to the residents of Westboro. And we expect to distribute another fifteen dollars to $17,000 worth of cards before the end of the month. So we, you know, dipped into our own treasury. We had a uh, substantial uh, gift from the Hannah Kane Golf Tournament. Um, Aaron Polito started that out many years ago and it's gone right through the different reps and Hannah Kane has kept it up and she's built it up bigger and better. Mm -hmm. So normally money that she provides to us, we uh, use to purchase farm stand coupons for our clients during the summer. But with her permission, we use that money this year to purchase uh, $16,000 worth of gift cards to start us off. So every client's been getting, uh, initially when we first started, we didn't know how much money we we're going to have. So it, they got a gift card anywhere between 50 and 100. Well, after three weeks, it was obvious that the donations kept coming in. So every client's been getting a gift card for $100 since um, the middle of March. And, and we have one more mailing of those going out at the end of this month. So that, and in addition to that, um, Amber 
from the school department uh, has been coming to the pantry every week and picking up between 700 and 1,000 pounds of food that they're distributing to families that they've identified through the school system that also are food insecure. So we've been able to help that way. Um, we have been working at the pantry for the last couple of weeks, getting it reorganized. It was it a fair state of um, chaos after the, all of the work and the cleaning that was done. You know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of boxes that were moved and stacked. Everything all had to be put back together and in the right order. Um, that's all been done. So our anticipation of um, starting distribution at the pantry uh, is next month on uh, June 2nd. Uh, I'm sorry, June, June 4th. 4th. Yep. That's a Thursday. Now we'll be doing a pre-box distribution, uh, similar to what you've seen on TV where the cars will pull up outside. Um, we'll have pre-boxes, boxes of um, uh, mostly all stable grocery items. Plus, we'll, they'll each, every client will get a couple of bags of frozen items, one with a hamburg and one with chicken, and then some other frozen items that we have. And they'll all be also be getting a gift card that time, uh -huh. too. Because, that, you know, if they want to go purchase milk or eggs, which we're not going to supply right now, they'll be able to go over to Stop and Shop or Roach Brothers. Yeah. Um, the boxes um, will all be the same. Uh, um, thank you to uh, Max Moving and Storage. Oh. They're the ones that um, are supplying us with 250 boxes that we'll be able to give out to our clients. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't realize that, Phil, that yep. they've always been a, a great partner uh, in town and, and they sort of find this unique way of kind of plugging themselves in. So that's fantastic. It, we've seen that with a lot of other organizations and businesses. Everybody's willing to help. So, and they've always in the past too. So, so that's, that's, um, where we are uh, to this point, we intend on opening the pantry on July 2nd um, for clients to come in. We have a, so people don't know what our pantry is like. There's two types of pantries. One's where you um, um, just go in, they give you a bag of food, uh, and you're on your way, similar to South Pro and, uh, and Grafton, um, because they're not in their own permanent building. They're usually in the in a church or another building. So they can't store items. So they go in, pack the items, and pass them out. We're fortunate where we can have a store, which it's it's small. It's just like going into a small convenience store. And they they actually do their shopping. And the reason we, we do that is because we feel that if we give them a selection, they'll take what they want to eat. Uh, if you don't like green beans, and I put a bag of green beans in your bag, you're not going to eat it. You, just, you know, you'd much rather have corn. So... That's why we want people to, to select. Our motto is take what you want, but eat what you take. So we, we think we get far more um, bang for our buck when we do it that way. Um, so that's going to start um, a little different than we normally do. You know, we, when we open our doors, there's usually 25 or 30 people waiting outside, and they all climb into a 10 by 15 foot area <laughs> um, and shoulder to shoulder. So that, that we can't <laughs> They'll have to stay outside. We're going to allow them to come in one at a time. Um, they'll come in just like they normally did, come in, do all the shopping, get their meat, and get their gift card, and then head out. So that's um, that's where we are. Um, and it's actually been almost as much work or even more at times than um, us being open on a regular basis. Oh, absolutely. Now, Shelby, can I just ask ask a question? Because I'm hearing the the numbers of the of the 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 food that you've provided in the past, and then these gift cards and the amounts, and they're astronomical. These are huge numbers. So I'm I'm curious because you know from your sense of it, if you were looking forward, say for, to the rest of this year, right? And I realize this is just a total you know off the off the top estimate. How much more do you think you would need in money? in order to, it, it, to, 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 to provide what you have been providing, if you make some assumptions about how that's gonna go. What, what, is, your, what is your sense? So that people understand if they, if they, because there's gonna be a need, you know, and to the extent, and the South, in Westboro people have just stepped up, uh, clearly, in a bunch of different ways to take care of the needs. Well, to give you a rough idea, our budget on food that we purchase um, the course of the year is approximately $100,000. 
Mm -hmm. that's food that's food that we purchase uh it's not donations um so you know every week we well before the uh, pandemic hit uh we had 147 families registered at the food pantry mm -hmm. um maybe 40 percent of those are seniors and the rest are singles and and families so we had a, a big group to begin with uh, when i first got involved with the pantry a long time ago when Mary, Emily, Libby, Libby and Bill Libby started it from the church in 1986. Um, we only had, I think, at, at the maximum way back then was close to 30 families. So we've grown grown a lot. And we still have our naysayers that say, oh, we don't need a food pantry in Westboro. This is Westboro. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. um, but we see it all, believe me. Right. Uh, we anticipate that we're going to be very short of food um, come the end of the summer, because what has happened is we've lost we've lost the post office food drive, which is approximately six to eight thousand pounds of food. We lost all the food drives at the Westboro Public Schools, which oh, I are, see. They are our biggest food supplier in the course of the year. During the course of the year, they probably generate anywhere between ten and fifty. 15,000 pounds of food for us. Um, we lost the Wasser food drive, which they do, which is all brand new food. Plus, we lost all the weekly food donations from all the uh, the churches. So, you know, we've lost maybe 20, mm. 25,000 pounds of food that we normally have to, to stock our shelves right now. So in so, addition to spending the money for the gift cards, we're going to have to spend money to uh, purchase food. Right. Yeah. And I think I think, right. Arthur, to your point, um, so certainly the intent of the um, COVID-19 Community Fund um, had the food pantry squarely in mind and folks can still donate to that. You can donate directly to the food pantry as well. They have a website um, and uh, in your shoes, which is another um, um, civic minded, if you will, group here in town. They're working in partnership right now with the food pantry. And we'll get that email address up and uh, maybe a little caption of it. But there's a food drive taking place on May 30th um, to support the reopening of the food pantry. And so folks can send an email uh, to the email address that will be on the screen, westboroofooddrive at gmail.com, and uh, schedule a pickup. You're just going to leave your groceries at the end of the driveway. Uh, the folks from In Your Shoes uh, will pick them up around 9 o'clock in the morning, and that will really help to start to restock in, in those donations that Phil was just talking about. But it is, when you start to hear the numbers, you sort of just go, oh my goodness, like what does it really take to, to support, you know, an existing um, about 157 families and certainly a number that is, uh, you know, that is growing um, pretty right. uh, at, at, a, at a surprisingly and uh, sad rate, quite honestly. So right. we can't, we right. can't stop kind of giving and being generous and, and we've always been really fortunate, both residents and businesses, grocers, um, you know, have worked closely with us, but, but that work continues and, and is greater now. Yeah. Cause if you were, you know, we're just going to your budget. If your budget had been a hundred thousand for the year and you've got half of the year left, that's 50, you know, except that you've got to assume that you're going to have more demand. So that it, plus, plus just getting the donations of the food. And, and as you say, You've lost a lot of your, you know, your your anticipated just free food coming in from those drives. So that's that's a big number. So so I'm, I'm really it's it's wonderful that you're that you're on so that we can really be kind of plugging you <laughs> as a as well, a as a as a donation spot. Well, we've we've picked up 25 new families that are, that we're supplying gift cards to every three weeks, and um, this week it was another 31 families uh, through the schools. So if we add those together, another, you know, almost 60 families to what we have, we'll be at, um, we'll be at record, record levels when the food pantry reopens. So I, I could sit and talk about food for a long time. Phil is a wealth of knowledge. We might want to have him come back at some point, uh, give us an update oh, on how sure. they're doing um, as they've opened. So Phil will maybe schedule some time in, in July or August um, once you're reopening, oh, you've reopened. Um, but I want to encourage folks to um, maybe pick up a couple extra items, go to In Your Shoes, 
sign up for the food drive and let's uh, get the Westbrook Food Pantry off to a great start um, uh, with some uh, food donations. You know, $10 of donation, for example, goes a long way uh, to helping uh, to feed um, those who are food insecure. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Phil. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be, we'll be back. We'll be back shortly. Okay. Hi, folks. Welcome back to this edition of Frank and Mary, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, I'm so excited to have with us here is our uh, second half guest, Mary Tabor from the Assabet Valley Pastoral Counseling Center. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, not unlike Phil, Mary and I have uh, worked pretty closely together over, over the years, but uh, most recently on many a Zoom call because Mary, too, is part of our town task force. Uh, so, um, and, and she's sort of like a mainstay in the community. She's, people say, have you called Mary Tabor about that? She'll know someone. So she's, she's one of those people, Arthur. One of those. That's yeah. great. The pil great. Pillars, pillars of the community. That's yeah, great. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I wanted Mary to come on because, uh, the pastoral council center counseling center has um, been around for a long, long time here in Westboro. I wanted her, um, mental health. It's national mental health month. We, this is a, um, uh, particularly challenging time for all that. We've talked about that across a number of our shows and no one really knows that better than Mary because she and her team are facing that on the front line. So Mary, you know, give us some background on the Pastoral Counseling Center and take it away. Absolutely. And I'm thrilled to be able to do that, to spread the word that even though um, we are not seeing people face to face these days, we are still open and uh, working on telehealth. So um, back in the 70s, the pastors at the local houses of faith uh, wanted to have a local counseling center to refer parishioners to. And out of that came a connection with Worcester Pastoral Counseling, and we in Westboro became a satellite of their counseling center and opened on 8 Church Street back in 1979. And over the years, we went um, as a satellite of theirs to being independent and becoming the Aspet Valley Pastoral Counseling, and then we merged with them <laughs> As it turns out, it came full circle and we merged with them in 2011 and renamed ourselves because of that, uh, the Pastoral Counseling Centers of Massachusetts. So we have the two offices, one in Worcester and our main office at 7 Church Street in Westboro. And um, we see people from 70 to 80, sometimes 90 different towns and cities in central Massachusetts who come to us. Um, we see people of all ages. Um, we have two child therapists out of our 11 therapists, and um, so we really run the gamut. And because we're a pastoral counseling center, just a little piece of additional history, because we came out of the effort of the local houses of faith, they have supported us through the years with board members and with donations. And also all our therapists are people of faith, of one faith or another, so that each of us and all of us can speak comfortably with um, people who come looking for some support and counseling if they're looking for, if they're people uh, who want to use their faith in the counseling sessions to help them heal or work through whatever they're working through. So we're quite comfortable with that. That makes us a little unique in the field. So, Mary, one question um, folks may be wondering, uh, myself included. So I'm one of those raised as a Catholic, struggling Catholic, you know, um, on occasion, go to that church, go to this church, whatever. Um, I presume you don't have to choose a, um, a counselor of a particular faith. Um, there's probably a matching process that you go through. Um, and I also pr want to presume that faith may or may not be kind of part of uh, a counseling uh, uh, program uh, with a particular individual, but it, it's there as an additional option given your specialty. Is that fair to say? You are absolutely right. That's a good comment and question. And um, we are a regular counseling agency. So people come with um, uh, uh, any or all faiths or people of no faith. Mm -hmm. And we probably see split down the middle 50 50 on that and so you're right it's only if the person coming has that desire to bring that up and to utilize that in the session wonderful that's great that's excellent so um mary talk to us a little bit talk to the folks you know out there who 
you know, maybe struggling. I, I think it's, you know, I always wonder at what point does an individual say, you know, I, I kind of can't do this on my own. You know, I'm feeling isolated. And we talked about this as a task force the other day. It's not about seniors. It's not about families. It's just about people that are feeling isolated. And I always, I worry about, you know, people that get to a, a breaking point, whatever point that is, and not, almost not knowing when they should reach out to someone like yourself to say, I need some help. Well, this is certainly a unique time. Um, all of us realize that and the stressors are incredible. So um, there's probably a lot more need than there ever was, but there's always been need because um, we all as humans have difficult times at some points in our lives and hard times. Uh, things hit us that we don't expect or um, we go through losses, whether it's job loss or divorce or loss of a loved one, loss of a relationship, or if our fear um, is coming to rule our lives or if depression and anxiety are affecting what we do. Um, sometimes it's just um, somebody wants to check in and, and feel the support and need to sort out a few things in their lives. You know, mm -hmm. it can be that um, average, mundane, simple thing. But um, these days, there is so much stress and anxiety. Anxiety is actually the biggest mm. reason that people are coming. And and um, does one need a referral from a primary care uh, to uh, work with someone on your team? How do and do you do private pay? Do you accept insurance? How does that all work? Good question. Um, you don't need a referral at all. Um, we get referred from other clients, from insurance companies, from primary care um, doctors, um, neighbors, family people, um, word of mouth. And so all anyone has to do is call our confidential mm -hmm. line, which I know you'll post yeah. um, at 366-4000. And um, within 24 hours, we should they, anyone should have a response from us. Um, and, go ahead, Arthur, go ahead. I, I just had a I just had a kind of a in terms of need, need for need for counseling. So this morning I got the call regarding the tenth client of mine so far who has died from COVID nineteen. So my, my my clients are in, are entirely seniors, and obviously this is what we've been we've learned. This is the vulnerable population. Two months ago, we were kind of scratching our heads: Is it going to kill us all? What you know? It was these terrible numbers, and now it's clearer. You know. Many parts of society are kind of feeling like they can unwind. Not my people, right? <laughs> Not my people. That would be there with the remaining vulnerable folks. So I and so I'm I'm curious. Have you ex been been getting much of that of folks who are just literally, you know, mom just died, my partner just died, and you know, and and or the or feel people who are being kind of overwhelmed by the fear of that as it is becoming clear that this population is the really vulnerable population. And then, and, 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 and what, if, if you could suggest something, what would, what, what would you tell, what do you tell those folks? How do you, how do you help them deal with that? Well, um, good questions and comments. And um, we have always seen folks who have suffered loss in their family um, and grief and loss is one of the main reasons that we see folks at the counseling center and a good reason to come talk it out with somebody. But interestingly, um, during this time, in the end of March, and we closed for seeing face-to-face -face people um, mid-March. And in the last two weeks in March and most of April, we had very few referrals, which was interesting to me. Mm. But I think we were all in such shock and just trying to cope at home with whatever was going on and right. wondering what was coming next. But this month in May, the referrals have picked up and um, they are people obviously um, overstressed and um, coming for a whole variety of reasons, not just the ones that you mentioned. We do, both answering your question and Shelby's comment before, um, we do take most insurances, everything except for mass health, but we also have a sliding scale of somebody doesn't have insurance or can't use their insurance for some reason and if they qualify you know we have a sliding scale and we also have an assistance fund to help with that so um we have lots of therapists who take medicare and are seeing older folk um mm -hmm. 
and they are continuing to come during this COVID time. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's, uh, it's all the above, you know, nothing, mm -hmm. um, nothing that was going on before COVID-19 has stopped in people's lives. Mm. It's just added and whole That's other for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. That's, so, that is, that's so true. I feel like, um, I feel like in some ways I have these moments of my day where, I mean, it is so crazy, but then I have these moments where I feel like I'm sort of like slogging through like mud <laughs> and then, and it feels like it's the longest day and, and other, um, and, but yet other parts of life have just been on, put on hold. And yet so many things have been sort of stacked on top of us to contemplate, you know, whether you're, um, you know, I mean, even just the stress of someone who may be immune com immunocompromised going out to the grocery store. I mean, that can bring with it a host of anxiety, um, standing in line, waiting your turn to get into the store, you know, a host of anxiety, um, uh, the, the money aspect. Go ahead, Mary. Um, I want to get in um, a short reading that I have Please. Uh, to leave you all with, and I know time is running out, but, um, you know, one of the things that we can all do, and we've all heard, but we need reminding, is to breathe. It helps with anxiety. It helps with the fear and worry that's going on. And it's incredible that just taking slow, deep breaths can lower seven different counts in the body, like um, heart rate and blood pressure, cortisol. So just taking a few moments to deep breathe is um, very helpful. And I'd like to just share this um, very brief That'd be uh, great. reading that's called, Oh God, I'm Spinning Out a Prayer. And it's um, part of a reading by uh, Reverend Dr. Hannah Adams Ingram, who is the chaplain at Franklin College in Franklin, Indiana. She gave this in March. There is so much I do not know. There is so much I cannot see. There is so much I cannot control. In the moments I feel powerless, I will take a deep breath, trusting that I am tasked only with doing my part, not the whole. In the moments I feel unsure, I will take a deep breath, trusting that I am not alone and that together our wisdom will be richer. In the moments I feel anxious, I will take a deep breath, trusting that there is no depth, I can fall out of reach of the spirit that holds me close. What I do know is that my life and love and worth extend far beyond my work. What I can see is that spring follows every winter and new life pokes out from cold ground. What I can control is my breath and the love I inject into a world so clearly lacking it. Wow. So I, I love That's that beautiful. you mentioned breath because that is something we can control. We just often need to just bring it down to that. I think Shelby and I were both taking a breath as you were doing yeah. that. That was amazing. Yeah. That's a, that's a wonderful that's a wonderful way to way to end. Thank you. So Shelby. I want to I want to I just want to encourage folks if, if there is a um, uh, if you're wondering who to call, um, Mary gave the number. We'll make sure that's up on the screen. Call the Pastoral Counseling Center five zero eight three six six four thousand. Start a conversation with them been around for a long time, trusted, grounded group. I think you see that from um, Mary here. And uh, Mary, I want to thank you. Thank you for um, passing on some healing words and, and reassuring words today. Thank you for being our guest. Thank, thank you. you. And, and, and th thank you. And thank you, Shelby, for doing this. Thank you. You just keep doing this. Keep finding these wonderful folks. Awesome. So folks, um, Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Take a breath. <laughs>